Hey everybody, it's windy out here. It's kind of cold too. Temperature's 50 degrees, humidity 61%. And I've been working on these escape hatches. Jeez. Um, I'm getting them, getting them kind of smoothed out. I've been adding a lot of weight to them. So they're functioning a lot better. Let's see if I can freehand this. Yeah, almost. There's no lubrication in the track. Usually I got some grease in there. So she's hesitating a little bit, but they're doing a lot better than what they were. Let me tell you. Go here and play with the other side just because we can, right? A very satisfying thud. I need to figure that out. Probably at the wrong angle or something. But there we go. Nice. And it's just going to get even better and better as we go. Let me get this locked in here for you. There we go. So what I've been doing over the past two days is I'm gonna show you the front and the back. I'll try to explain this, how these things work. Uh, I was able to remove the escape hatches from the uh, RB36 4213571, take it off its track and get some really good side views so I could kind of see how these things are made up. Um, it's one of those things where I build it, then I understand it more, so I build more. So the way these work is you got your two tracks, or not tracks, but you've got a you've got your um, your basket that goes all the way around and it's hollow to allow for these screws to go down. And then from that basket, which on the real B36 was a stamped steel piece or a stamped aluminum or steel, probably not magnesium, and then it's got these horizontal wings. This one protrudes half an inch, and this side is three eighths of an inch. And what these do is you've got a big weather sealant or pressure rubber, something of that nature, that it overhangs here, which locks up, this, seals up this, and then you got one on this side, which seals this, and then I think there's another one between the glazing retainer and the glazing itself. I'm gonna take you over on the other side. I've got a little drawing of a, uh, a cross section, so you might be able to understand that a little bit better. And here's the, like I said, it's got, a, it's got a basket and it's got these two horizontal wings that go out and you're gonna have this huge gasket and this represents the glazing panel, the glazing retainer with another gasket and of course your screw. That's what I'm getting at. Let me get my light up here so I can show you what's going on as you can see I've made this this gasket of course it's it's three-piece welded it's the uh, the basket itself plus the two horizontal areas uh, looks looks pretty nice I'm happy with it um, that's a lot of cutting and welding but what that does is not only of course it makes it heavier and gives it a lot more strength and it locks up there like nothing this gives me a mounting surface for about six screws here some screws here here that allow me to mount the internal panel that is very thin metal and it's going to go from here to here to there to there and it's kind of shaped fancy with some angles and it's got it's definitely something they stamped so i'm probably gonna have to weld that as well i end up i try to make stuff out of aluminum i end up having to just weld steel but that piece that's going to screw onto here has a gasket and it's a little bit smaller just a little bit which holds the internal clear vision panel that you can take off and then clean that so that's where we're at now. 
someday, there we go. My goal is to be able to knock it up there in one fell swoop like they do in the movie, but we're getting there. Get, they get stuck from time to time. There we go. There we go. But that's that. That's where we're at. Uh, I'm going to do the... Uh, I know I say I'm going to do something. I end up doing something completely different. But my goal is to uh, get back to working on the uh, this side of the canopy to get the um, get these retainers up. And then when I come in here and do all the detailing, I want to build these. But you, you know me, I'll probably have them up there tomorrow. Um, I've got people, one after the other, who think that me, a humble guy in a garage in West Virginia, is building a B36, building a full-size, airworthy, fully functional B36. Um, if you've come far, come this far, and you think that that's actually happening, you're you're wrong. Um, I've said in many videos what I'm doing, and the, the the glimmer of hope that that might happen is if a billionaire donates a billion dollars. I mean, just the uh, just for the seventy seventy five aircraft aluminum. I I think it's like before shipping $300 a sheet. And I did some simple math on, on my B36 Facebook page. I think like a hundred thousand pounds of aluminum. So, you know, you're, you're looking at almost a million dollars just for the aluminum, if not more. Um, it, I, I, I've, I've got a lot of videos where I explain, I, I have a very basic working knowledge of, things about real airplanes. I know that they're in incredibly expensive. Um, in order to, to build a, an airworthy B-36, you have to have a purpose for it. You have to have a place to put it. You have to be able to move it. And uh, this is all I got is, is this garage. I mean, unless it's, I, I can't even, I can't even talk about it because it's, it's so irrational. So, you know, there we are. Um, the comments on, on some of my screws aren't perfectly straight. Uh, the reason is because I don't want to spend the next 20 years building this thing. Um, my screws are relatively straight, as you can see. They're not that bad. So, that's where we're at. I'll see y'all next time.